Tuya tells them to step back while he intervenes, using his magic to open a time portal and transport them to the sky, 10,000 miles above the ground to prevent them from crashing down. But to their surprise, nothing happens to them, and Tuya and his friends attack the monster again. One of the girls uses water magic, throwing a huge water bomb, and then adds a fiery punch to it, killing the monster. Then the blonde girl uses the power of lightning and thunder, killing another monster. Thus, they successfully accomplish their mission and defeat the monsters. After that, Tuya and his group return home through the time portal, where they are welcomed by the two girls, Renee and Cecily, who congratulate him on defeating the monsters and promoting them to the red rank, meaning they have become first-class adventurers. Renee wondered where Miss Shiska was, but Toya told her that he had forgotten about her earlier. He went to get her some tea and she told him that she didn't believe he had forgotten about her and his promise to return home, but that he had a habit of abandoning girls. He was annoyed by her words because he didn't have that habit, but apologized for using the time portal to return home and not remembering her. The other girl intervened and told her to stop talking so much so that Toya wouldn't get annoyed and actually abandon her. She said okay and Toya asked her what she wanted to talk to him about today. She said she wanted to talk about the automated transfer circles to Professor Babylon, but unfortunately they didn't have enough information about the subject. Toya was surprised that she intended to search for them because he didn't see a reason to do so. She asked him if he didn't want to know more about ancient science or lost technology. He said he did, but it would require a lot of time and effort. She called him lazy and without dreams, and said that he should think about it until she got information about the instant transfer circle. She promised that if they got something from it, they would make a lot of money. After that, the leader summoned him to talk to him and ask him about his work and the phone he has because he is not good at using it until now, and this girl spoke to him and said to him, congratulations on the engagement. You have seen everything and bought them four diamond rings. You should now treat them with kindness and softness. And the next morning Tuya went to make a strong summer at the morning for one of his girls to replace the one he broke during the last fight. Then they went together and she told him I want to stay with you always, you should never abandon me. We are now going to the capital, where the king and queen are, ah, and their daughter today. Her mother said to her, mother, be sure to dedicate yourself to Tuya more and support him as his wife. And the king said to Tuya, jokingly and jokingly, it is difficult to marry four women, and you have to give them their rights. In a child quickly, can you do this? His daughter got angry and punched him in the stomach because he was not tactful in speaking. Toya was stunned by the situation and how this girl could hit her father. The queen said to Toya, I apologize for this, but what are we doing now regarding the official announcement of the engagement two days ago because there are some problems and it is that the people who propose to her will cause grudges and hatred between them and there are many people who do not like us well and you also have to accomplish some things in order to prove yourself that you are new to this girl's engagement. Today, then they went through the time portal, and he said to her, since I am your fiancé now, can I become king? She said to him, in the current situation, this is the likely outcome, but if I get a younger brother or my uncle has a male child, then the results will change, and I do not think that you want to lead me to think about your being king or otherwise, is this true? He told her yes. And he spoke to himself, saying that I must achieve the achievement that the queen spoke about, and I think that she intends to do something that will achieve great benefit for the state. Then he went to this man and this girl and started walking around and asking about the conditions of the country or anything special he could offer. This man told him that there are no worldly tourists in the country because they do not have enough services. Toya said that tourists need a place to stay, but this place must be equipped at the latest level in order to attract a lot of the public, then he used his magic and built a swimming pool, as well as a small waterfall, a bathroom for men and another bathroom for women. The man and the girl marveled at this matter. Now, if people come here cheaply, they will stay here for a while, and many, many more will come after that. And he called... for him, as he met every girl of them and used to buy them new clothes, and from here they seem to think of him and love him because he cares about them more than anyone else. Then another girl talked about her story with Toya. 
Since at first she found it very difficult to talk to men, but talking to Toya was completely different. The first time was when he asked me to teach him magic, and I ended up teaching him, but in the wrong way, but he never got angry and listened to me with full concentration. For a short period of time, I managed of being his friend. And now it is the turn of this girl who wears a Chinese dress. She said this is normal for a kind-hearted boy who thinks of others more than he thinks of himself, helping the needy and the poor. And now it's two days turn, and she said to them, as soon as I saw Toya for the first time, I knew that he was the right man for me, since I fell in love with him at first sight. We go now to Toya and he is taking a hot bath, then this girl entered him and said to him finally, I found a relic of Babylon, so everyone was shocked because she entered the men's bath without any permission. The story continues and the group heads to a ruin of Babylon. Lean mentions that the ruins lie in the Rabi desert in the kingdom of Sandora and she states that they are buried under the sand. Toya doesn't sound interested and Lean wonders if he is just going to take a casual look at the ruins. Toya mentions that he is and Lean then hopes that the ruins lead to the library. Toya then remembers that the ancient civilization was destroyed by the phrases, and he thinks that he might need to borrow the power of Babylon in order to fight them. They then notice the phrase chasing a few people and they engage the phrase. Else then uses wind magic to protect the people from the phrase and leans that Lean Ye then asks Toya to teleport her on top of the phrase with his gate spell and Toya does so, and Ye attacks the phrase, but it's no use the phrase then attacks them and they dodge. They then think that if they are hit by an attack like that, they will be dead in day then comes there, and he mentions that it's been a long time. Enda mentions that he sensed the presence of the phrase. So he came to take a look. Toya is surprised. single stump and Toya asks him how he did that Enda mentions that he just used vibrations at the same frequency as the phrase and Toya asks him what he meant by the barrier at this time the guard at this time from the guard carol a night from the third organization empire, affiliated with the empire princess came to check on her Toya princess and told her that was Toya had saved her when she was in danger cracks are appearing in the barrier and the phrases are using them to invade Enda explains that this phrase was just a soldier searching for the Sleeping King and he then leaves the scene cuts to Toya and the group providing water to the people they just saved and the rescued people thanked them. The leader of the group introduces herself as Rebecca and adventurer Toya thinks that they are not equipped for desert travel and Rebecca explains that not all of them are adventurers and some of them are slaves and they are on a journey to find a way to remove their slave collars. She explains that the collars can only be removed by their master but he is dead and they are traveling to another country in the hope that they can find someone who can remove the collars. Toya then thinks that he might be able to remove their collars, and he uses a ports to remove all of their slave collars. Toya then asks them what they are going to do next and Rebecca mentions that, even though their collars have been removed, their slave status still remains, and they can't return to the kingdom of Sandora and she is going to take them to another country. Yumina then asks them if they would like to come to Belfast and Rebecca wonders who she is. Yumina then introduces herself as the Princess of Belfast, and she mentions that her country would be willing to take them in Rebecca and everyone else. Then thank you Nina and Toya teleports them to Belfast later. Toya tells the rest of the group that Rebecca and her group will be staying at his house for now, and they will make their future plans later. Lean then asks Toya who that man was and how Toya knows him. Toya explains that his name is Enda and he met him when he went to buy the engagement rings. He mentions that he saw Enda paying with a strange coin and he helped him to pay for his crepe and they told him that he didn't have any money and he was looking for a job, so he helped him register at the guild. He states that he didn't expect to see him in the desert and Francesca then recognizes the coin, and she mentions that it was minted over 5,000 years ago. The others think that the coin doesn't look that ancient and Lean then thinks that Enda seems suspicious. As he knows about phrases, and he also has a coin from over 5,000 years ago. Toya agrees and else then asks him. What exactly is a phrase? Toya tells them that he received a message from Dr. Regina Babylon a while ago, and the doctor had a tool that could see into the future and she used it to watch Toya and the others. But one day the phrases appeared out of nowhere and they destroyed the place where the doctor was located. 
The doctor predicted that the world would be destroyed by the phrases. But one day the phrases disappeared suddenly and the world was spared, Lean asks Toya. Why he kept such an important thing? A secret and Toya mentions that he couldn't find the right moment to tell them about it. Lean then wonders if the phrases were really so numerous back in the day. Then why is it that nobody has witnessed them until now? Toya then mentions that Enda told him that the barrier that protects the world from foreign invasion has cracks and the phrases pass through them. Toya then asks Francesca if the people fought the phrases 5,000 years ago, and Francesca mentions that they did and the doctor even developed an ultimate weapon to defeat them, but it was too late. of Babylon. Toya is excited to know that the doctor developed a robot, and he hopes that the ruins lead to the hangar. They then arrive at their destination and Toya notices that there is nothing here. Lean then uses a wind spell to remove the sand and the ruined surface. Toya then enters the ruins and he notices that he isn't able to use his magic inside them. Toya then thinks that he is trapped and the teleportation array is the only way out. Toya activates the teleportation array and he is teleported to another part of Babylon. An AI then welcomes Toya to the workshop of Babylon and she introduces herself as Rosetta. She mentions that only the Chosen One can enter the workshop and Toya mentions that he has already been recognized as the Chosen One by Francesca. Rosetta mentions that this simplifies things and she then states that she will test if he really is the Chosen One as a test. Rosetta asks him to guess. The color of her panties, without moving from his place, Toya thinks that this is stupid, but he has no choice but to complete the test. <laughs> Rosetta then gives Toya a tour of the workshop and Toya notices that the workshop thinks that he can just use modeling to manufacture anything he wants but this might help him to mass produce things. Toya then tries to copy his gun with Mithril, and the workshop creates a perfect copy of the gun. Rosetta mentions that he can also change the design of the gun, and Toya notices that the workshop can't copy the program installed in the gun. Toya mentions that he can just reattach the program, and he thinks that the workshop is really convenient. As Toya then asks Rosetta about the frame gear and she mentions that the frame gear was made here and she also assisted the doctor with its creation. Toya asks Rosetta if she can make the frame gear and Rosetta mentions that she can only make equipment and they don't even have the blueprints of the frame gear. She mentions that the blueprint is stored in the storehouse and Toya thinks that his only choice is to either find the hangar or the storehouse. Toya then mentions that he should call everyone over and he uses gate to teleport them. Lean is disappointed that they found the workshop instead of the library, and Rosetta mentions that the workshop is far more useful than the Sky Garden. Toya then wonders if they can merge the Sky Garden and the workshop. Francesca mentions that he can, and Toya states that he should first return the garden and the workshop to Belfast and merge there. The scene changes to Toya returning to his house, and Rebecca and her group apologizes to him for not treating him with respect as he is. The fiancé of the Princess Toya mentions that he doesn't mind and he is not even a noble. He mentions that they don't have to be respectful while talking to him. And the group feels relieved to hear this. Toya asks them what they are planning to do now. And he mentions that the three of them can find work at the guild. Rebecca mentions that she is worried about the slaves and she wonders if they can stay here until they find some work in the city. Toya mentions that it's fine with him and he wonders if he can help them somehow. The recap covers the events of Toya's visit to the library cafe and his quest to slay bloody crabs, as well as his encounter with Prim, and the discussion of the Order of the Rose book series. Before starting the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are new to my channel. The story continues and Toya visits the library cafe. Moonreader, the receptionist of the cafe, addresses Toya as the owner. Toya then asks Rebecca how the cafe is going. Rebecca mentions that it's going very well, and the girls also seem full of life now that they have found jobs. Toya then explains that this business idea came to him on a whim. He mass-produced bicycles in the workshop and sold them to a trader to gather money for opening this store. 
Rebecca then mentions that the books that Linza brought for them have been especially popular with women. Toya mentions that it's great, as buying books costs a lot of money. We'll then ask Toya if he made all the furnishings here himself, and Toya mentions that he did. Will states that it must be nice to be able to use null magic, and he states that his grandpa was also able to use it. But he doesn't have any affinity for it. Toya then asks, well, what kind of null magic did his grandpa have, and Will mentions that he had the spell called gravity, which let him make anything he touched heavier, but it only made things a tiny bit heavier, so there wasn't much use for that spell. Toya mentions that he shouldn't say that and depending on how it's used, it might turn into an ultimate spell. The scene changes to Toya and Yamina visiting the guild, and Yamina mentions that she also wants to have a red guild card like everyone else. Toya then notices a bloody crab slaying quest, and he takes the quest to the guild receptionist. Reader Library Cafe, and Toya mentions that he is introduces herself as Prim, and she mentions that there is a book in the referee's imperium called The Order of the Rose, and she asks him if he plans to stock them. Toya asks Prim if that series is already complete, and Prim mentions that it is, and it has 15 volumes. Toya then mentions that he will order them, and Prim states that she will be looking forward to it. Later, Yamina asks Toya if he knows what kind of book The Order of the Roses is, and Toya mentions that he doesn't know. He asks Yamina if she knows about it. Yamina mentions that she does, and she explains that it's a story about a nation's order of knights, depicting the conflict between the male-only order of Rose and the female-only defenders of Lily. It also follows the romance that develops between the knights within the order. Amidst that conflict Toya doesn't understand how romance can blossom within the order, as all the knights are guys, and he then understands what kind of book it is. Toya then mentions that he did promise Prim, so it would be wrong not to buy them. Toge is then surprised that Yamina knew what kind of series The Order of the Roses and Yamina mentions that she actually knows the author of these books. That's why she knew about the series. Toya then wonders. If the author is someone he knows, and Yamina states that Toya wouldn't know her if she is real Ren referees, the first princess of the referee's kingdom Yamina then explains that the referee's imperium and the kingdom of Belfast have always been closely affiliated and she has known the princess for a long time now. At some point she found herself into these things and she ultimately began Tobe explains that he just used a spell to double the crab's weight, and he mentions that lack of magic power must be why Will's grandpa was only able to make things slightly heavier. <laughs> they then return to the guild and Yamina finally acquires a red guild card. Toya then tells Prim that he will be heading out to buy the books now and he wonders if she could make a list of interesting titles from that genre. This gets Prim excited and she discusses this with her fellow guild receptionists. They then make a list after some discussions and they give the list to Toya. Toya then mentions that he wants to go to burn the capital of referees and he asks Shumina to share the capital's memory with him. Toya then goes to a bookstore in the referee's imperium and he gives the list to the store owner. Toya mentions that he is buying these books because his customers requested them, and the owner mentions that they have the He needs to buy books from the other genre as well. Otherwise, those sorts of books will take over the entire cafe. Toya then goes to the counter. With the other books and a girl at the counter is looking to buy the last volume of Rose Magical, but the owner informs her that she has just sold the last copy of that book to Toya, and the shipment will arrive. The girl asks Toya if he would let her have that book as she has tried the other bookstores and they that he came here to buy them as well, and he can't let her have it. The girl then notices that Toya is buying a lot of books in this Shauna 
and she thinks that he might be really interested in this sort of thing. And she tells him that she will autograph every volume of The Order of Rose if he lets her have the book she wants. Toya wonders what good her autograph will do him and the girl then introduces herself as real refreeze. The author of The Order of the and to catch her lie. He mentions that it would mean that she is princess. Rialil can't believe that Toya knows her real identity and Toya realizes that it's really her really a wonders if Toya is information to blackmail her and steal. Her brother's chastity in Toyot then mentions that he only found out about it because he heard it from Yamina. Rilil then asks Toya who he really is and Toya introduces himself, and he mentions that he is the fiancé of Princess Yamina. And according to the books Toya is buying. He should be interested in boys and she wonders if he is after the king himself. Toya mentions that he isn't and he then states Yamina explain things to her. Toya then gets Yamina with his gate spell, and she explains everything to Real. Toya then gives Relia the book she wanted, and he mentions that he copied it from the workshop. Then changes to the cafe and Toya has stocked all the requested books. The receptionists enjoy the new books, and this makes the cafe busier than before. Toya then talks to Will, and he thanks him for teaching him. That gravity spell. He wonders if Will wants his help with anything and Will mentions that he wants to get stronger, as he has someone he wants to protect. Toya then takes Will to the Knights, and he asks them to train him on his way back. Toya meets Cells and she mentions that she would like to take a dip in the hot spring and she asks Toya to take her there with his gate. Spell Toya takes us to the hot springs and else relaxes in the springs. Meanwhile, Toya asks the owner how the business has been going and the owner mentions that it's been going great and they are earning more profits from the bath fees than the end. Toya then meets Zanik and Zanik mentions that he is a regular here. The owner states that he has also started recommending the hot springs to the customers. Visiting his clothing shop and Zanik mentions that he has completed another outfit design that he received from Toya. Zanig wonders if Toya wants to see the outfit and the scene cuts to Toya. Having else try, the outfit Toya mentions that it's a present from him and he states that she looks really good in. That else is embarrassed to wear such a cute. Outfit in Toya asks her if she will express and wanted to enter the castle. Wanted to enter the then Lin this and she thanks Toya for this present. The scene then cuts to Toya and Yamina, enjoying tea at their house and Lindsay comes there with a book. Linza then shows them the book, and she mentions that this is the new series written by Real Refreeze. Toya takes a look at the book, and Linza mentions that the story is about a man with almighty power who is out to take over a nation. Crazy Listening to the synopsis Toya realizes that she got the idea from their meeting and he gets angry at her thanks for watching part. The episode begins with Toya telling his friend Lindsay that he wants to store the books in the Regulus Empire. It's his first time going there, so he got the memory from Laplace. He then asks her what she'll do, and she replies that she'll read a little, so Toya decides to go buy some books. They then go to the Regulus Empire. Because this isn't an ordinary fire, so he uses his power to lift himself above the houses. He remembers that Logan told him about some strange movements in the Empire recently, and he was talking about their army's reinforcement, but he didn't expect things to pack it, so he shoots two of them with a bullet to immobilize them for what happened and a sick boy tells him that the army is rebelling against them, and there's a military coup. Toya takes him to his room and uses healing magic on him, so he'll be safe if he stays hidden there. He then continues his way because he wants to find the emperor and help him escape through a gate, as he may settle the fight decisively once they don't find a hostage to kill. He enters the emperor's castle, but he doesn't know where his room is exactly, so he takes a walk inside the castle.
He hears someone screaming, so he takes out his phone to investigate what's happening, and he finds that there's a girl, and someone is trying to harm her within a 100 meter range. He then locates them precisely and goes there, finding that this person wants to kill Princess Lelouchia, who is the third princess of the Regulus Empire. He saves her and checks on her, finding that she has this wound on her arm, so he uses his magic power to heal her. When she looks at him, she trembles with fear, and he realizes that she's very shy. She tells him that all that's in the matter is that she hasn't interacted with men much before, so she was a little nervous. At this time, the guard Carol, a knight from the third organization affiliated with the Empire, came to check on her princess and told her that Toya had saved her when she was in danger. Toya explained that he was an adventurer from Belfast who used instant teleportation magic to visit the Empire to buy some items, and when he arrived here, he saw this chaos. Carol was shocked that he could use instant teleportation magic, so she pleaded with them to teleport the Emperor and the Princess to a safe place. Toya agreed and they introduced themselves before agreeing to take the Princess to a safe place as soon as possible. However, Toya was very worried because the chances of the Emperor and the Prince being in this condition were very difficult. The Princess reassured him that she was prepared for anything that might happen to them and that she could not escape before them. Carol then led them to the Emperor's bedroom. When they entered, they found General Bazar attacking the Emperor as he lay on the ground, causing the Princess to cry out of fear for her father. Carol asked him what he was doing to the Emperor and why he was doing it, and the General realized that they were still alive. Toya told him that he was an adventurer from Belfast who had come here to buy some things and wanted to understand what was happening so that he could decide which side to take. The general replied that the emperor was suffering from a mental illness, and there was no better time than this to break the non-aggression treaty and invade Belfast. Toya realized that he wanted to take over the country and ignite war in it because Belfast was allied with its neighbors, Nismini and Rivers. They could not defeat these three countries, so the general said that they had not been sitting idle for the past 20 years after signing the non-aggression treaty. They used demonic magic to summon the demon king, and indeed, this huge demon was summoned. The princess was very afraid. The general was surprised that he made a contract with such a powerful demon, but he explained that he sacrificed for him by freeing a group of criminals detained in the capital city. He also revealed that his magical power was self-made and contained in his bracelet, which absorbed magical power from others. Tawa realized that when he felt weakness in his body, it was due to the bracelet absorbing his magical power. The demon then absorbed all the remaining magical power and used it to strike the general, who was shocked to find that he still had some magical power left. However, the attacks did not affect the monsters and the demon, and the general explained that one of the unique advantages of this demon was its ability to nullify magic and be immune to magical attacks. This unique feature was also present in the demon, which is why he contracted with him. Tawa became annoyed and used his gun, but the general was able to dodge the attack. The general informed Tawa that the bracelet on his other hand protected him from all types of magical attacks, making it his impregnable defense, and that no living man could harm him. Tawa then looked at the emperor and found that he was still alive, so he decided to save him first and then search for the prince. The priority was to save lives here. He used instant teleportation magic and asked the gatekeeper to transport the emperor, princess, and Carol to a safe place. He then withdrew from the scene, promising the general that things would not go as planned, but the general was not worried because no one could harm him as long as he had the Pollock bracelet. Tawa used his sliding magic to slip under the general and make him fall to the ground. So Toya couldn't harm him physically, but he wounded his pride, knowing that the general would stop what was happening with his bracelet. Then Toya decided to use the illusion magic to leave him another additional gift before leaving, then he used the mirage magic and left through the portal, leaving them behind. When the general looked at his hands, it appeared to him that they were filled with insects, and he kept screaming. After several days, Toya sat with his friends and told them what he did with the emperor, then he cast the healing magic on him. His friend asked him why he always sniffs everything like that, and he told her that everything happened despite him. 
When he went there and investigated, he found that there were 10,000 soldiers in front of 1,000 Imperial Knights, meaning 10 times as many, and they had to do something before the Demon King attacked Belfast. And he had an idea that might succeed, as he wasn't a fan of torturing anyone, but there was no other choice. The girls understood that he was planning to do something scary. Then he went to the Emperor to check on him, and the doctor told them that they didn't need to worry as long as he rested. Princess Lucina thanked him and said, This is very reassuring, and I am very happy. Then Toya saw his friend standing at the door and said to her, You hid from me, so she entered and spent two days with them, and they got to know each other. Lucina said to her, I am the third daughter of Emperor Zephyros, and Yamina replied, You faced a difficult time, and I am glad to see you safe. Lucina replied, I am pleased to hear that because I am Toya's fiancé, then Toya spoke to her and said, I will go to the castle now and deliver my report on the Empire, and he left them and went. Dumina asked me if I loved Toya SHE was surprised. She then said that Toya is the man who saved her life and he is very handsome and trustworthy. I replied that describing Toya's charm with one word is not enough, and I have some matters to discuss with her regarding an obstacle in front of His Highness the Emperor. Later, the king spoke and said that he did not expect to receive both good and bad news today. Dumana will receive a younger brother or sister, and he has mixed feelings about it. Toya Alt, will it be to which he replies, I don't mind letting them live in this country, but we can't afford to hire them all to asked him to explain his plan to defeat General Bazur, and apologized for burdening him, but asked him to continue with the matter. We then see Toya with this girl, and she asked him if he had finished his preparations. She mentioned the absorption bracelet and the pulveric bracelet, and he was surprised. She meant that both bracelets leaked from the storage and fell into the hands of the general. He asked her if the eternal gem, which grants immortality to its owner, had caused a stir in Aishin. She also revealed that it was a handmade item that leaked from the storage and blamed the storage manager for being negligent. Later, we see Lu happy that her father woke up and thanked Toya for saving their lives. Her father said that this rebellion happened because of his weakness and lack of resourcefulness. Toya told him that he happened to be in the capital city while shopping, and asked what he will do now. He replied that he must defeat General Bazur and draw up a plan as soon as possible. Lu told him to look for her older brother before taking on General Bazur, as they don't know if he is alive or dead. Toya asked her if the prince has any unique qualities, and she answered that his hair is silver, but she doesn't know his other qualities. Toya was surprised and told her to close her eyes and imagine what her older brother looks like now. Toya, I have met this man before, but I did not expect him to be the prince. Then, Tawa revealed the prince's location through the phone and the king asked him, Are you sure about this? You will face a devil and an army of over 10,000. Can you face them alone? Tawa replied, I will handle it. I have powerful allies with me in the end. After that, Tawa talked to his allies and asked them to follow Elsie and Ye to suppress the army. They tried not to attack anyone who surrendered to them, and Tawa said he would defeat the demon lord and the general. They launched an attack and defeated everyone in the capital, but then the monster appeared. The monster hit Tawa, but he blocked its attacks and used his power to strike back with all his might. The monster fell to the ground, and Tawa said, maybe he has magical heroes, but it doesn't have any effect unless the spell targets him. I used the spell on the blade. The girls were happy that he defeated the monster easily, and Tawa said, we still have some final touches. It's time to punish you. Then, he asked, who are I still have the advantage of magical heroes, and I have the polyophelic bracelets and absorption. Nothing makes me afraid. Then Toya uses his power and these things appear, he says it's a very welcoming gel that purifies water, it has one negative aspect, after an hour of his death, it emits a very bad smell, and the slime in which the man fell in here died an hour ago. Glass made in the workshop is very dazzling, I cannot smell it from here, and the man faints and the monster disappears. After that, the king speaks to the people of the capital, saying that the recent uprising was caused by the madness of a part of the army, 
But the man behind this uprising has been arrested and the capital is under our control again. As your emperor, I offer my deepest apologies for the problem that occurred due to the reckless This girl says, I am surprised by your drawing of such a disgusting strategy, it is a wonderful talent, and thus we have finished this episode. In the previous episode, in this city, even though he came for a completely different purpose. But when he saw the chaos and turmoil in the country, he decided to help them. Some of the tyrants wanted to fight the army and take the king and his family, but Toya was prepared for them and, with his team who never leaves him, he saved the king, his son, and daughter from imminent death. How will the king thank him for this wonderful act? And what adventures will Toya and the girls embark on today? Our episode today begins with Toya and his friends, as they meet with the king to thank him for his wonderful achievement. The king thanked Toya for saving him from death, as well as saving the prince and princess, and even the entire empire. The king offered to reward Toya, but he refused, saying it was his duty to do so, and anyone else could have done it. The king of Belfastin noticed that Toya had not changed and spoke about how he had tried to give him a title in Belfastin before, but he had refused it in the same way. However, Toya's engagement to my daughter was a coincidence, and the king of Belfastin proposed that Toya should marry his other daughter, Lucia. If he marries both princesses, from the states of Belfastin and Rigolus, there will be a great alliance between the two countries. Princess Yamina, the daughter of the king of Belfasta, agreed to the idea, and Toya was to propose to the other king's son. If this is what she wants, I will confirm it myself. I think this will bring the two countries closer together, and I have taken the opinion of Toya's other fiancés, and they all agree. Tua was surprised by Yumina's words and was very upset when he asked her how she dared to do all of this and how they found out that he was courting them. The king laughed and told him that this matter had been discussed in depth before, but he would make sure of his daughter's decision and ask her again if she was sure about this and marrying Tuwa. She said to him, Yes, father, I am sure and very happy. To the point where I could faint from joy. These are the happiest moments of my life. I have always wished for a man like Tuwa, kind, loving, and protective of everyone. He will protect me from any danger and safeguard my life. Then Tuwa and the rest of the girls left outside, and Lucia was very happy. The other girls congratulated her, saying that she would be with them. However, Tuwa spoke to the kings, asking them to wait until they were both 18 years old before marrying, as he had not yet obtained a card. They replied, it doesn't matter. We will wait for the necessary time. The important thing is that we will form a strong alliance between our countries. Tua was very angry when this person, who seemed to be a minister, spoke to him, saying, Your power has increased to a great degree to change the balance of power between the countries. Therefore, you cannot be ignored anymore, Tua. Your power is equal to that of a very large army. Then the king changed the subject, saying, We can now take advantage of this opportunity and officially announce the engagement of Yamina and Lucia to the public, locally and internationally. But this means that we must give Tuwa a high position or a certain position, and we will discuss this with Emperor Regulus. We will also decide to cede parts of the territories of both countries for Tuwa's sake. Tuwa asked, will I take these territories without paying for them? The king replied, yes, and you will also establish a small state on the borders of Regulus and Belfast. Tuwa was amazed by all of this. This means that he will build an entire country, and the amazing thing is that he will also be the ruler of this country. The king mentioned that it will be a state without inhabitants, but they have to do this in order to prove that he is the king and to propose to the princesses publicly and in front of everyone. The inhabitants in this area are the ones who will come with him there, but it will be an independent country, meaning that you will be free from any interference by other countries. You can also create your own laws and do as you please, and when you do all of that, it will make you suitable for marrying the princesses. Yuya talked to himself, saying, Ah, I think it's a tempting offer. When I thought about it, I learned that these two men had already prepared for this, 
and I think that this tempting offer can help me gain both status and a large land, and I can do what I please with it. At that moment, Tuya said, okay, I accept your offer gladly. The next morning, Tuya and the princesses had breakfast together and then they talked about Tuya becoming a king. They couldn't believe it, they didn't expect all of this, and Tuya didn't expect this high status and a lot of land. Then, the princesses talked to him about the name of the land, and he thought for a moment and said, I found its name, Duchy of Brunhild, and its translation is, The Maiden Warrior. Then they asked him when they will go to this country, and he said, If we leave now, they will announce our engagement with Yamina and Lucia immediately. But if we stay here, they won't do it now, and I think you love the city of Belfast and you don't seem like you want to leave it. One of his friends said, I think leaving the palace here to be used as an operations base in the capital is practical. It can be called the embassy of the Duchy of Brunhild. Tawa was delighted with this choice because it was very appropriate, but we must build a new place to live in there. Finally, Princess Lucia entered in her new white dress, and her father pointed to her from outside the country. Tawa looked at her and was very pleased because he loves this color. Then the girls talked to her and asked, What kind of house do you want to live in, Lucia? She replied that we were talking about this with my father a little while ago. We want to build a big castle, and eventually, you will be the ruler of a country. Princess Yamina said, That's a very nice idea. Tawa continued to think about the matter, and it seems he was very excited to do it. At that time, the other girl entered, eager to work and wearing her work clothes. We now move to the workshop where this girl owns this large workshop, which has automated tasks, and you can also examine any target and modify it to suit your taste and build it for you. We will go to the site and create the parts according to the data, then reshape the land and move the parts automatically inside and assemble them together. It should be completed within three days. Once we have all the materials, we can start building at any time. Tawa asked her, do you mean the raw materials for the castle, such as marble and bricks? She replied that there is also glass, wood, copper, iron, and other metals, as well as silk, cotton, and other fabrics, which are among the necessary materials. Then he angrily told her, we can't do that. She replied, this is Lucia. All of these materials must be new. He responded by saying that if the materials were broken, they could be recreated, so using old ones would be better. She then told him about a deserted castle in the northern region of the empire, which they all liked and agreed to use as a building site. After three days, they were amazed at the castle's construction, and the girl said, this is the power of the workshop. The girls were impressed and wanted to enter the castle. Then, Lin spoke to Toya, saying that she had become a king, and that she was shocked and would marry the princess of the Regulus Empire. He asked if she had come to make sarcastic remarks, and the engagement announcement would be made later, and her position would change if the queen was pregnant with a boy or girl. Lucia then spoke and said, but I ended up being sent to this country, so I want to find a place to live. He told her that he thought she was the ambassador to Belfast, and she replied that she had thrown that responsibility onto someone else, and things here were very entertaining. She was also tired from her long journey, so she would take a break. Toya then put a key in the gate and told Rini that only those who were authorized could cross it, and he recorded everything he had recently used. They tried to touch the metal plate and Rini entered the door, then told Toya that there was a message from the king. The king then spoke, saying, This is the Empire of Rivere. This is Emperor speaking to Toya, saying that he has heard a lot about him from the King of Belfast, and he desires to form friendly relations between his empire and Toya's country. He also wants to ask for Toya's daughter's hand in marriage. The Emperor has heard that Toya has completed the construction of the Brunhild Castle and would like to be invited to visit it. Toya asks if the rulers of other countries can be invited to meet him, to which the emperor agrees, stating that it is good to build friendly relationships between countries, even kings need to relax and let loose. Toya then speaks to himself, saying that it is fine to invite them, but where should they start with the preparations? They can perhaps have their team at the Moon Reader Cafe to make up for the lack of manpower. 
Toya suggests playing bowling, billiards, and maybe even table tennis, and he will provide balls, dummies, and air hockey. They try everything to welcome the king. To which Toya says, I will need things like this for the kings and emperors. It seems like I can leave the entertainment room for them, and that would be the only safe thing. I will use magic inside the castle, but I want things to be more secure before the royals enter. Then, a girl appears and he asks her, what are you doing here? Are you on a mission? She answers, no, I am no longer a shinobi. I made my way here, hoping to serve you. Toya is surprised and says, the Takeda family has been ended? She responds with a yes and that despite the trouble he went through to save them, the new ruler ignored the people. Ignoring the new ruler, raising taxes, and interfering in the affairs of other regions in doing as he pleased, Kusakasama tried to admonish him, but he refused to listen. In the end, his land was seized, and he thought to himself, one of those foolish rulers. The elders of the Takeda elite held a council and decided that we would be willing to serve Braunheld with the rest of our clan. He says to her, I understand your situation honestly. It will be reassuring to have more allies, and I will be grateful for the joining of the Takeda for elites here. But wait a minute, with the whole clan? Yes, they are waiting outside the castle gate, sorry, and how many are they anyway, including children? There are 67 of us in total. Toya asks, what? That's a large number, will it be too difficult? To which he replies, I don't mind letting them live in this country, but we can't afford to hire them all to work in the castle like you will. Don't worry about it, Toya. The shinobi clans generally have side businesses as well, and we have the skill to earn our daily bread. Toya says, no problem. After that, Toya goes out to meet the members of these clans, and they say to him, welcome, child. One of them says, I'm sure you've heard the story from Tsunabaki, but thank you for welcoming us. We're happy to be here. Toya says, I was just looking for extra labor for our newly established country. One of them says, definitely leave the wars and castle guards to us. He becomes annoyed by this and thinks to himself, please don't suggest anything violent to this extent. Another person from the group says, I can't believe this child has become king now. The country may be small, but it remains fascinating. Just make sure you don't end up like our expelled ruler. They laugh with each other and someone asks them, hey, is Kusaka-san here? I've heard he's very skilled. He's very talented. Have you met him yet? No, but I wanted to ask him about some things. Later, Toya meets Kusaka and tells him, we've gained more citizens suddenly, so I saw that we'll need people to manage the work to provide for everyone. It's true that a city can't grow without the help of its people. The first step will be to develop the highways. Toya uses his modeling magic to develop the roads quickly, and they become really wonderful. They also complete the inspection points. Toya says, now that we have streets, we'll need some shops. We'll need restaurants where travelers can rest in places where they can get information. Kusaka says, regarding the land to the south, I have some information for you. Toya says, I'll go there right away. Later, the girls tell Lu to take a break and ask if she's having difficulty adjusting to this new life. They say, you shouldn't push yourself too hard. We're all learning a lot and we want to be helpful to Toya as soon as possible. Toya seems very busy today. He thinks to himself, things are starting to come together now. I'll open a new branch of the Moon Reader Cafe here too. The children are happy with Toya and they say, good day, Smock. We see that his new girl is preparing his lunchbox because he didn't go to lunch. He tells her, you really forgot that I haven't eaten yet. I made it for you, my dear. You're the one I made it for. I heard from the girls that you love dishes, so I asked one of them to teach me how to prepare it. I'm sure it doesn't look presentable because it's my first try. To which Toya replies, it's delicious. I can't believe it was your first try. She becomes extremely happy and pleased to hear this from him, and he tells her, Toya, I was telling myself that you're cute. She blushes a lot in response. In fact, my dear, I also prepared a dessert. It's amazing. Let's move on to Toya in the palace, welcoming his guests and saying, welcome to my private entertainment room. It is very organized and magnificent, 
containing many entertaining games, as well as plenty of delicious food and drinks. He tells them, enjoy yourselves in your home away from home and have a good time. One of the boys says, this is an unbelievable scene. I never imagined it would be possible to see all the royals from western countries in one room, having fun and playing games together. Toya tells them, I finally prepared a form of entertainment for everyone to watch, and will settle for this amount. Enjoy. They then set off the fireworks, and the soldiers imagine it's an attack, but Toya tells them that it's called fireworks and they're supposed to enjoy watching it. His new fiancé thanks him and says, I've learned a lot for the first time since coming here, such as cooking and things about myself since meeting you. Every day has been enjoyable. He said to her that it was too late for that, but he gave her this ring, perhaps our marriage is still far away but it is a sign of our engagement, so you will be very happy. I can consider myself your fiancé with pride now. He told her that he was confident that we would be like friendly siblings now, but there was no need to rush. He took her hand and said that he was sure that over time, we would look like lovers and then as spouses. Basically, we will be living together in this town for a long time. And with that, we have finished the fifth episode. The adventurous boy, Toya, has the greatest supernatural abilities that no one has been able to defeat yet, because he has a strong and cohesive team. They fight monsters and roam the lands to help people and rid them of these monsters. The episode begins with Toya and his friends at a mysterious place that is frozen in ice, which was mentioned by the Elfrau merchants. They saw the circle, but they didn't know if it was the entrance to Annie's transfer to Babylon or not. So, Toya climbed up to look at the circle and asked them to wait for him for a while. He would try to enter it, and indeed, he entered the circle and found a trace of Babylon's traces. Then he put his hand on this button, hoping that he would go to the library, warehouse, or store, as he could punish her for all the extra trouble she caused them. Then all these colors appear and disappear to go to the Babylon facility, where he met Flora and told her that they were at the administrative terminal station of the Alchemy Pavilion. Then she felt that he was grumpy, so she asked him about the reason behind his disappointment, but he told her that there was nothing. Since Toya arrived at this place, this means that he has an affinity for all elements, just like the professor, and Flora cannot give him permission to use the Alchemy Pavilion because it is only given to the compatible person. So, she told him that he was recognized by the park and workshop administrators, and Flora was very happy because she had not gone there for many years and was sure that he was qualified because he was accepted by them. Then Toya's genetic information was recorded, and the ownership of the Alchemy Pavilion was transferred to him, and Flora became his servant. Then they entered the Alchemy Pavilion, and she talked to him about this pavilion, which is a facility that integrates magic and various materials to create new things, such as a dose that heals wounds, which is considered one of the simple things. So this wing functions as a medical facility, so it is possible for them to re-implant an arm or a leg. Then Leary took this selection of medications stored on these shelves. There are also some medications made by Professor, who was skilled in her work, as she made sensitivity boosters, preventatives, and fitness enhancers, all of which are safe for use without any side effects, and their effectiveness is very impressive. Tawa asked her about regular medications, and she told him that they never stored them. After that, his friends came and one of them talked. Then Toya and his friends head into Toya the forest, and his friends head where the ruins the seemed to be right in front of them. Seemed to be right. Did their conversation for a while and then went to the library. The girl said to Tawa that the new books had arrived, and he replied that he planned to present them at the Moon Reader Cafe. There's a spell I wanted to look up, and then take this book and search for it. He said, we'll use magic to swim and throwing ourselves consumes a lot of magic power, but I should be okay. After that, Tawa used the flying magic, saying that it works well and he thinks he will try to fly higher. He gets higher and higher and is very excited. Then the girl tells him that she got excited and then felt nauseous and unfortunately returned to the ground. Then she asked him if there were no other problems, and if I cast that flying spell, I can also fly. He replied without thinking that it would work. It's not a controlling spell. You can't use a strengthening spell on Lindsay, but you can fly if I carry you. She said to him, no, that would be a bit embarrassing. Then he said to her, 
But perhaps you can fly if you combine that with a spell to lift things up while I was looking for a flying spell that makes things rise to the user's arms. Then he tries the spell on her, and she flies up. He said to her, we can fight the enemy fairly and justly. She asked him, is that why you were looking for flying magic? So he said to her, we may have to face enemies who can fly, and there is always a chance of encountering another bird prey as well, so I will fly again. Then these knights appeared and said to him, We are the knights of Brunhild, and we are pleased to serve from today. Toya replied, I have decided that it is time to establish my own order of knights and begin recruiting. It seemed as though it would be an exciting organization of knights. Then the phone rang, and Toya answered it. The girl on the other end said, You are in full romance mode, and you can't hide it from me. You've established your town and your knights and are planning to take time off to deal with your relationships. Toya told her to stop reading his mind without permission, and she replied, My horns can sense anything related to love. So go and tell your parents, Yai, Elize, and Lindsay, about your relationships. After that, we see Toya with his parents, Bai and Bayo, talking to him in a low voice, I saw things as I said they would turn out. This man is now my hope, Yai, and I hope you take care of him like your other fee- Now. Toya was puzzled by Yai's father's words, and Yai spoke up, saying that she would be her father's opponent because she would not tolerate any insult to Toya. Be her life partner. I will protect Toya and sacrifice my life for him, she said. Then the mother asked her what that meant, and she told her husband that there was no need to fight because she was happy to have met such a wonderful partner like Toya. So the father agreed not to fight and shed tears. The next morning, Tawa went to visit the family of the two girls. When he entered the house, the girl's uncle behaved strangely and apologized for not providing enough hospitality. The daughter of the man explained that her uncle tends to act weak in front of noble people and recounted a past incident when Tawa had encouraged him to stand up for himself. The uncle's wife was impressed with Tawa's humility and revealed that the girls had expressed their admiration for him in private messages. The girls became embarrassed and blushed with shame upon hearing this. Then, a blonde-haired boy approached Tawa and introduced himself. Tawa recognized him as the great duke of the state of Brunheld which was far from their current location. The boy asked Tawa if he could defeat the Thunder Bear, a monstrous beast with lightning powers. Tawa was surprised and asked if there were any Thunder Bears in the area. The man's wife revealed that some of these beasts had been spotted recently, wreaking havoc on the fields and destroying everything in their path. Tawa knew he had to stop them before they caused more damage and destroyed the entire town. He went to defeat the Thunder Bear and returned after killing many of the savage bears. Relatives of the girls spoke highly of Tawa, describing him as strong and kind, treating everyone with humility and compassion. As Tawa went to drink a cup of coffee, his former colleague, Indy, entered the room. Toya spoke to him and he had many questions about the Friss, a large animal that Toya had fought before but was killed by Indiha. Indy had told him that there were things he could tell him and things he wouldn't be able to, and then he told him that they were strange creatures that seemed to be from the underworld or extraterrestrial creatures. They were looking for the king who led them and came to this world looking for the king's nucleus. They attacked people because the king's nucleus they were looking for entered the body of a person from this world and they only used the voice emitted by the king to search for the nucleus, but they could not hear it because the sound was obscured by the host's heartbeat. They also killed people to get rid of the noise that interfered with them. They wander and kill anyone they meet as searching for their king is a matter of instinct for them, and they don't realize that they are killers or invaders. Toya told him the meaning of that when this world was about to be destroyed 5,000 years ago, they were the cause of that. The other person answered yes and that he had contributed a little to the destruction of this creature, but now the barrier was beginning to collapse slowly and he believed that it was only a matter of time before the barrier collapsed and this creature returned. So, I think it's only a matter of time before an advanced frisk comes here as well, although I don't know if it will be in a year or 50 years. 
Toya tells him that you were also looking for the king's nucleus and killing people as well, or are you an ally of humanity? He tells him that it is impossible for him to kill people, and he doesn't know if he is an ally even though he hunts the frist to gain some time as he is waiting for the king's nucleus to transfer to the next world. I think that's all I can tell you for now. I have to go back to the things I need to do. Before he leaves, Tao asks him what he is, and he tells her that he is a traveler. She bids him farewell and he departs, but Tao remembers that they will be in real trouble if a herd of prey appears as it did 5,000 years ago, and our only means of defense is to fight them. We then move to the workshop where Tao asks the workshop owner if anyone can operate the tire gears. The owner replies that a person's magical power and unity play a role, but anyone can operate them with training. Tawa informs her that we can use the workshop's copying function to produce them in large quantities, but it turns out that this is very difficult because it requires a huge amount of materials and is also complicated. It also takes a whole day to produce a single tire frame model. Producing large quantities of them from scratch is the best that the workshop can achieve on its own. The storage units stored in the warehouse have approximately four to six units of each type, and Tawa is surprised to find that they had planned to fight the prey with this very small number. It turns out that they suddenly disappeared just as we were about to start production in large quantities. At present, Tawa thinks that the most we can do is gather materials and search for more in Babylon, but we will need to gather information to find them as well. We then move to the palace where the Black Snake tells us that in this case, we will need something that can fly because they are very fast and can go to different places. The turtle then tells Tawa that she should make an agreement with the Emperor of Flames, as she owns the wings that carry fire, which are our counterparts. If she calls them and makes an agreement with them, she should call thousands of birds at once. The snake agrees to that and asks Toya about the appearance of the Flame Emperor. The cat tells him that he is a calm person despite his powers and has the best personality among all of them. This angers the snake because he believes he has a great personality in himself, so the cat tells him to be quiet. After that, they go outside the palace to summon the Flame Emperor. Toya uses his power to extract him with a spell and says, You who rule over summer to himself, anything violent please don't to suggest this extent. anything violent to this from the group said, Another person from the group says, Suddenly, he appears before them, and he seems very powerful. It turns out that they know each other well and haven't seen him for a long time. The animals talk to him, and they love his presence with them. They tell him that Toya is the one who summoned him, and he is their lord. Then, they make an agreement, and Toya is surprised by his easy agreement to it. The bird tells him that he is strong enough to lead the White Emperor and the Black Emperor, so there is nothing he can do to change the result. Now, give me a name, and let's make the agreement, he names him Kogayaku, and he likes this name and asks him to call him by it. He tells him that he relies on him to achieve their true goal. Then, the bird uses his amazing power to convey Toya's voice to all the birds and asks them to inform him if they find any ruins, suspicious buildings, strange structures, or unusual monuments. Indeed, all the birds respond to the call, and he hopes that will help them find the remaining Babylon. And with that, Episode 6 ends. Follow us in the next episode, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive all the new updates. The episode begins with Toya waking up from his sleep and finding his girlfriend, Yamina, next to him. He is shocked because he went to sleep alone last night, and no one has ever slept with him before. Furthermore, he didn't sleep well, as no one has slept beside him before. Yamina woke up from her sleep, and Toya asked her what she was doing in his bed. She told him that she became his wife, so she stayed with him. However, he couldn't believe that they are married as he has been recently focused on the state and hasn't paid attention to her at all. Yamina left to prepare breakfast for him, and then Toya went to the park, still shocked by Yumina's actions. In the park, a bird approached Toya and informed him that it just received news from one of the birds they sent for exploration. They found something described as a pitch-black pyramid made of an unfamiliar material. It resembles the ruins of the alchemist's wing, and it could be a real treasure. Toya wonders about the location of these ruins and gathers all his donations in one place. He informs them that he plans to go to Babylon, 
which is located on the western side of the Sandora Kingdom. The island is much smaller than Bernheld, so this would be their fourth Babylon. If luck is on their side, he hopes it will be the storage this time, maybe the amber. However, his girlfriend suggests that the library might be suitable, and she would be very happy if it turns out to be so. Alternatively, they could try the tower or conduct research. Toya informs them that Ind mentioned it's only a matter of time before an advanced foe appears. Therefore, he hopes to obtain frame gears soon. Then Toya and his friends head into the forest, where the ruins seem to be right in front of them. They don't find anyone who has ever lived there, which means there are many animals and monsters wandering around. They quickly encounter a huge monster, and they all get ready for anything that may happen. Toya asks his small bear, Paula, not to fight with them because she's too small. The monster attacks Toya, and his girlfriend saves him by hitting one of the shots in its eye. Then his other friend uses the power of ice binding to restrain him with it. Afterwards, all of Toya's friends collaborate to kill him, but he was a very weak monster, not impressive at all. Despite being a beginner rank, he had tough skin that they could use for something. This angered Toya greatly because he couldn't do anything afterwards. Then he heard a voice coming from the other side and quickly ran to check the place, but his friends were faster and saw what was happening. They killed many monsters, and Toya can rely on all of them at any time. Paula persuaded Toya to go to this place before any of their friends saw them. Then they went to this pyramid and placed their hands on it, and they were transported inside. There, they found an instant teleportation circle to Babylon and talked to their friends that Toya found what he was looking for and will teleport immediately. The girls asked him to be more careful, and indeed, Toya instantly teleported to this place. This girl comes to him and tries to hit him with a big machine because he was the first to dodge her instant kill attack. Toya says, this girl is the director of Babylon, but she's tiny. Then he asks her who she is, and she answers that she is the director of Babylon and her name is Monica. She asks him to prove his strength to her. Then she attacks him, but he uses the sliding power, causing her to fall to the ground. She attacks him again, but he uses the shield power, causing her to fall again. She gets very angry and says, you surrendered and admitted that you're compatible. From this moment on, you'll follow my orders. The recording and genetic information storage are complete, and ownership of the Amber will be transferred to him. Toya is very happy and then they enter the place, and he says that it's very spacious. She answers that spatial magic is used on the inner parts of the Amber, so it's much bigger inside. Then Monica opens this door, and Toya is surprised, so he says, this is the original frame shield, so it's an old mode. Then he asks her to mount it, but she replies that he can mount it whenever he wants, even though it won't work, because it has no fuel. He asks her about the fuel it needs, and she tells him that it uses ether fluid as fuel, and if her memory doesn't fail her, the research director can create it. Toya then speaks in astonishment, saying, you mean we have to find the research lab to make it work? She replied, saying not to worry, as Flora might know. They then went to Flora, who said it's not impossible to make it, although what she can make here would be inferior to what the research lab's director can create. Then she asks about ether ore, which amplifies, stores, and releases magical energy. They need enchantment stones, and the girl hands them magical stones. Flora says, these are raw etheric stones. If we have an enchantment stone, we won't be able to price it. We can search for one using your mobile phone. Toya starts searching, and indeed, he finds places where these stones are located, including one in Braunheld. After that, we see Toya with the stones, and he asks Flora for her opinion. She answers that it's very big, but half of it should be sufficient. Then Toya goes to the large robot and says, only one more month until the ether fluid is complete. I'm very eager and don't want to wait any longer. After this, the two girls come to him to perform some light maintenance in this place because it has been over 5,000 years since this amber was used, but it's equipped with materials that prevent corrosion and deterioration. However, dust and some dirt still accumulate, so some light maintenance is necessary. But the redhead girl argues with him because she used to take care of the amber well. 
Then she asks him if he wants to try sitting on the captain's seat or not. At that moment, Toya becomes very happy with these words, and they go to see the captain's seat, where Toya sits on it and is very amazed. Then the girl told him that once he masters these buttons and programs, the rest will be just simple exercises. This robot is equipped with the latest devices in the world because it is linked to the commander's mind who operates it. Therefore, you need extensive experience to train on it and become a seasoned warrior. At that moment, Toya exclaimed how beautiful it is, but it will take a long time for him to get used to it. However, the trainer and the owner of the place assured him not to worry because they have already prepared a training unit for him. It works with magical power. Toya then started training and was very happy as the robot moved exactly as he wanted. Whenever he thought of something, the robot would act accordingly. Now the trainer will teach him how to lead in actual combat. It has been incredibly enjoyable. Let's go to the castle now, where there are many training rooms recommended by Toya so that everyone can train. During this period, we will work on producing units that send the actual frame in large quantities. We should have enough for everyone in the castle. We also need to be very alert to any enemy attacks. At that moment, the girl approached him sadly and asked him to marry her because she cannot live without him. Then she continued arguing and manipulating him until this responsible man arrived. Ah, how annoying she is, he said. She bothers the king, but the girl is very upset because her parents force her to marry another man, but she doesn't want to marry anyone other than Toya. Then Toya asked about her parents, and this responsible man told him that he is Prince de Bon, the first prince of the Leanhide Kingdom. However, the girl doesn't want to marry a mysterious man, she wants Toya, who has a kind heart. Prince de Bon has a very bad reputation in his treatment of women. He is a womanizer, and many girls, including herself, fell in love with him. Then they realized that he is a betrayer and a cheater. They also say that he is over 30 years old while the girl is only 15. At that time, Toya was greatly disturbed by this because he is a betrayer and a cheater. Then they informed the minister that they want to marry each other today, even though she has not reached the age of maturity. Toya was shocked by the situation. How could he do all of this? He claims that he fell in love with her at the social gathering so the girl begs Toya to take her with him and treat her like his sister. Just staying by your side is enough. Toya tells her that he also opposes her marriage to such a foolish prince, and although it is a problem between the countries, he doesn't think he can solve it based on his personal decision. He believes that he needs to consult others. Then they go to the girls, and they inform Toya that there is no problem with him marrying her, and they are happy to have more people join them. Toya tells them to put this issue aside for now. Now the question is how to reject Prince de Bon's marriage proposal. The girl tells him that she can simply refuse him by telling him that she will be Toya's bride. The servant informs them that this could cause some problems. She heard that Prince de Bon is vengeful, and in the worst case scenario, he could sever the relations between his country and ours. The girl tells them that she cannot cause problems for others. They think together about a suitable way to solve this problem. One of the girls suggests that the radical solution would be to crush that prince because the foolish prince who acts selfishly harms everyone. He is also a despicable and perverted man in his thirties who manipulates women. He should be eliminated immediately. The user asks Toya how exactly she plans to kill him, and she informs them that another girl will create a sniper weapon. Another person suggests a little bit of potassium cyanide to extinguish his light, and another says they only need one blow with a pipe wrench. Toya gets annoyed with these foolish opinions and tells them that, in any case, let's start by visiting the Duke. We can tell him about our feelings regarding this and let him think about something. Maybe there's something we can do together. They agree on that, and indeed, they go to the Duke, who tells them that he was also thinking about this matter. However, if you agree to marry Sua, then I will have some options at least. At that moment, all the annoyance of that stupid prince will be directed towards Braunhild. Toya mocks this opinion and tells him that we need to return to that stupid prince. If his reputation is bad, 
then the question is why he hasn't been expelled from the royal family. The Duke tells him that Wardak, the Prime Minister of Lanhia, has influence, and I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said that this man holds all the power in Lanhia. Rumors suggest that their king is just a figurehead. Toya asks who this Prime Minister is, and the Duke tells him that Wardak is from the same family as Queen Dakia, the mother of Prince Saphan. He takes advantage of that position to do as he pleases, and I've heard that the only good person in that family is the second prince. Toya is surprised that there is another prince besides the stupid prince, but he is a son of a concubine and seems to have been forced to live far from the palace in disgrace. But I've heard that he is a good man. Toya wonders if he has a different mother, then that means he is not from the Wardak bloodline. The Duke tells him that the mother of the second prince was kept isolated due to illness, and there is no support for her. It seems that all the prince can do is barely keep her alive. Toya feels sad about this tragedy, and suddenly the servant enters and informs them that the envoy from Lanhia has arrived. The Duke tells them that it seems their patience has paid off. Well, I have made my decision. I will officially refuse. The envoy enters and says, Please forgive me for interrupting, but I came to receive your answer regarding the last proposal. The Duke thanks him for making the journey and says, let's get straight to the point. We appreciate your gracious suggestion, but I am forced to decline. The reason is that my daughter has chosen another man for marriage. The envoy asks who that person is, and the Duke points to Toya and says, His Majesty, the Grand Duke of Brunhild, Mochizuki Toya, is the man sitting in front of you. The envoy is astonished that this man is the Grand Duke of Brunhild. The envoy then kneels before Toya, but Toya stops him and tells him that he doesn't have to do that for him. They inform the envoy that they didn't expect to meet his majesty here, and they thank the lord for it. They have heard about the duke's accomplishments from many places. The envoy apologizes for asking, but he wonders if it's true that the duke can use instantaneous teleportation magic. Toya confirms it and the envoy begs him to save his mother. Toya tells him that he explained everything from the beginning and informs him that his name is Cloud Zephyr Lanhia, the second prince of the kingdom of Lanhia. Toya, when he was living in a community with the king. Then this man introduces himself and tells them that he is the second prince of the kingdom. At that moment, Toya is shocked by this revelation. But Cloud continues speaking and informs them that there are rumors circulating about his mother, claiming she is ill and confined in a mental hospital. However, the truth is far from that. She is being held as a captive, imprisoned by the Prime Minister, Warrad. Toya informs Claude that his father never told him anything like this, but Claude tells him that his father is powerless against the tyrant Prime Minister. If he tries to oppose him, he could be killed. It turns out that Warrad has a desire to become the first prince of the kingdom and believes he can fulfill this ambition and he most likely chose Toya's mother, Sal, as his target because she is a young girl who wouldn't be able to resist him at that time. The yellow-haired king then suggests the idea of organizing an urgent summit with Western countries regarding this matter. Toya, deep in his thoughts, realizes the magnitude of the situation. The king tells them that they need their help. They head to the meeting and propose making Claude the heir to the throne because he is the one deserving of it. They also discuss Toya's mother, and Toya assures them that he can rescue her. However, they must escape as soon as possible. But Claude tells him that he cannot escape because he has suffered and struggled greatly in the past. He wants to cleanse the country from their tyranny and oppression. Toya asked them for their opinion on supporting Prince Claude at this time. They all expressed their agreement and willingness to crown Prince Claude as the ruler. Claude thanked them sincerely for their support. However, they wondered how they could overthrow the Prime Minister, and they realized that using physical force wouldn't be the best option. They placed the responsibility on Toya's shoulders and instructed him to take action. Now, let's shift to Linnea, where Toya, his friends, and Prince Claude arrived, thanks to Toya's demonic abilities. Claude was amazed by Toya's strength and extraordinary powers. Toya explained the plan to him, stating that he wanted him to report the progress of the engagement. They entered the royal palace, where Claude's evil brother awaited. 
He questioned why Claude returned so quickly, as it was unusual for someone as foolish as him. Toya and the girls observed the scene while remaining hidden and unnoticed. Toya noticed a collar around the girl's neck, making it impossible for her to escape. Claude's wicked brother, Zeban, informed him about the response from the kings regarding the mission he was assigned, which was to propose to Duchess Ortlind. However, Claude informed him that the response was a rejection, as the girl was already engaged to someone else. Upon hearing this, Zeban struck Claude on his face and belittled him, saying he was worthless and should have tried again or kidnapped the girl. He called him an animal incapable of taking any action. Zeban then questioned Claude about who had proposed to the duke's daughter. Claude revealed that it was Toya, the Duke of Brunheld. Hearing this, Zeban was surprised by this newly established state and ordered Claude to return to Belfast and spread rumors and lies about Toya being a womanizer, making women cry a lot. This way, their engagement might be broken. However, Claude didn't approve of this plan, but Zeban became angry and kicked him in the stomach, slamming his head against the ground and he tells him that he needs to realize his position at that time. During this brutal beating of Claude, his mother intervenes and questions Zabon about his actions. She asks about the news regarding the engagement. Zabon informs her that the engagement was rejected because of Claude. Afterward, they leave, and it seems that the mother is completely distressed. How can she witness all of this and remain silent? Then Toya appears and tends to Claude after he has endured severe blows. The girls are extremely angry at this foolish prince and his unforgivable actions. Toya then asks him about the slave collar that was with him. Claude informs him that Zabon purchased it from a merchant in the kingdom of Sandora, despite slavery being forbidden in their country. That slave collar was the one that was around the girl's neck, fully controlling and dominating her in this manner until it is removed by an expert. Toya then uses his gate ability to free the girl. However, Zabon quickly discovers this and rushes in, asking Claude if she had passed by or not. But Claude informs him that he didn't see her. At that moment, Vradak, the tyrannical prime minister, arrives and tells him that when they find her, he must kill her because he no longer needs her. At that point, Toya notices that the collar closed once, and if it were around the girl's neck now, she would have been killed instantly. This greatly angers Toya. Zeban then complains about his useless brother, Claude, who is incapable of taking any action. He informs him to send Claude to the kingdom of Balwar, where there is a queen who would suit the prime minister. He believes that Vradak plans to use Prince Claude to declare war on the kingdom of Balwar. For example, they could send him there with an official declaration of war, and at that time, the recipient of the message, who was angered by Claude, would kill him. Then, Toya informs Prince Cloud that from this moment on, they will confront Prime Minister Vivake. Prince Cloud agrees to it and says that he will save his mother and fight the Prime Minister. They initiate the operation, and Prince Cloud informs them that his mother is held captive in the heavily fortified Galia Fortress, under the control of Prime Minister Vivake. However, with the power of Toya's invisibility, they can penetrate it. Toya then immobilizes the soldiers stationed in front of the palace using to any enemy attacks. Moment, the girl at that moment, sadly, the girl approached him sadly her because she asked him to marry her because she cannot live without then him. she continued, his mother, whom he hasn't seen for a very long time. They embrace each other and shed tears, deeply moved by the reunion. They then transport her through the teleportation gate to Toya's palace, successfully completing the rescue mission. At that moment, a man named Marquis Cobb approaches them and informs Prince Cloud that he is pleased with his decision to fight Prime Minister Vivake. He adds that now, with the support of the Kingdom of Belfast and other allied nations, they have nothing to fear. Toya informs them that while they are ready to provide assistance, they prefer to establish control without resorting to violence. Marquis Cobb suggests that by restraining the Prime Minister and stripping Prince Sabun of his rightful claim to the throne, they would have the upper hand. However, Toya expresses his belief that restraining the Prime Minister won't be a problem. The real issue lies with Prince Sabun. One of Toya's companions proposes the idea of banishing Prince Sabun as punishment for his wicked deeds. Marquis Cobb explains that it's not feasible because the Prime Minister has eliminated all clear evidence against him. 
Toya suggests threatening the king and forcing him to hand over the throne to Prince Cloud. However, the question remains, how do they get rid of them? Toya declares that he has no intention of showing mercy to those who plan to enslave so. The girls then notice a wicked look in Toya's eyes. Afterwards, they proceed to the Prime Minister and Prince Sabun. The Prime Minister informs Prince Sabun that Queen Arya has disappeared from Galia Fortress. The soldier informs them that she was kidnapped by Prince Cloud. This angers them greatly, and they threaten him with severe punishment. Suddenly, the soldier exits the room, and Toya quickly enters, remaining hidden from their sight. He overhears their conversation and the Prime Minister says that they need to hasten and ask His Majesty to hand over the throne to Prince Sabun. Otherwise, they will be forced to capture Prince Cloud. Zabun asks about the war with Palaf, and the Prime Minister sadly informs him that they will postpone it for now and prioritize eradicating this rebellion. He continues to speak to his wife, mentioning that the loss of Queen Arya is a heavy blow and that Zabun should have claimed the throne earlier if this were to happen. But he needed the king's power to keep Marquis Cobb within his borders, and Zabun should succeed the throne at this moment. Toya takes out his phone and secretly records their conversation. The Prime Minister further states that before the news of Queen Arya reaches the king's ears, if her life is threatened, the king will undoubtedly agree. Toya realizes that the king was being threatened with Queen Arya's life, so he tells his wife about it. She asks what they should do with the king when he abdicates the throne. The Prime Minister, her husband, tells her that they will hide him, and at that moment, they will let Claude die as well. They won't leave a single member of the royal family alive. Their son will soon become the king of this country, and a new royal family will be born. Later, Toya plays the recorded video for his friends and Prince Cloud. They are shocked by what they hear. Marquis Cobb informs them that Prince Dave is the runaway prince, the son of Wardak and Dakia. This is how they are trying to drive out the royal family. Prince Dave decisively asserts that he has no need to hesitate any longer and will fight those traitors who are trying to seize our country for the sake of the country, his father, and his mother. Marquis Cobb agrees with his resolute words. Then, Toya informs them that he will go and reveal the complete truth to the greatest victim, referring to the king. He teleports to him using the teleportation gate and tells him the whole truth. Afterwards, the king gathers all the princes and governors and informs them that he has summoned them here despite their busy schedules to share an extremely important matter. He reveals his intention to abdicate the throne and resign, announcing the next king and handing over all official duties. The designated successor is Prince Cloud, the first prince, who will inherit the throne. Prince Sabun is shocked by this decision, as well as the prime minister, his wife. Then Prince Cloud enters to be crowned as the king, and Zabun and his supporters object to this decision. The Prime Minister responds to the king, stating that it is customary and respectful for the first prince to succeed the throne, and his majesty should adhere to this rule. The king agrees with his words and informs him that this is precisely why he handed the throne to Cloud. His wife also objects to this decision, stating that Prince Dave should become the king as he is the first prince. This angers the king questioning how she dares to utter such empty words. Then, Prince Cloud summons Duke Brunheld the Great to enter. Toya enters with his girls, led by a large tiger. He plays the recorded video for them, the one he captured earlier of the conversation between the Prime Minister and his wife about their intention to get rid of the king and the entire royal family. The Prime Minister denies the video, but his denial is futile. He tries to stop them from playing the video, but the tiger frightens him and prevents him from moving. At that moment, everyone present realizes that Prince Sabun's father is the Prime Minister and that he is not of royal blood. The Prime Minister apologizes to the king and admits his mistake, saying that he was indeed a fool in the king's eyes, even though he treated Zabun as his own son without knowing anything. He expresses his anguish over Zabun's wrongful actions, and now that Arya is safe, the king has no reason to be lenient with him. From that moment on, the king dismisses him from his position as the prime minister. As the king, he must prioritize the safety of his people, although he regrets the ten years he spent under the prime minister's command, protecting Arya, and he will continue to lament that. After that, Toya asks Zabon, 
What should we do with these three? Zeban responds, I swear, it was Ardak and my mother who planned to kill you. I have no involvement in it. They inform the king that Zeban and Ardak are aware of all the crimes and misdeeds committed, which warrant the punishment of execution. Zeban is shocked by this revelation, and Toya tells him that it's time for him to pay the price for everything he has done. Zeban pulls out his gun, aiming it at Toya and firing a few shots to intimidate her. Toya tells Zeban, do you think I would let someone like you live? While you have been killing innocent people in your town, you believe you deserve forgiveness? Zeban collapses unconscious. Later, Toya apologizes to the king for overstepping her boundaries. The king responds that Zeban needs to pay the price for his actions, and he has already declared their execution sentence. However, their punishment will be left to the new king, Cloud. The king orders the soldiers to take Zeban, the former prime minister, and his wife to the prison. The new king, Cloud, appoints Marquis Cobb as the prime minister and initiates a cleansing of all the merchants and nobles who were colluding with the former prime minister. Zeban, the former prime minister, and his wife receive an official death sentence but are secretly sold to a slave trader. Toya says that now that the case is resolved, she can focus on the tire treads. She jumps on the king's son, informing him that she heard from her father that he defeated that foolish prince for her. She praises Toya, saying he is truly the best and the best husband. Toya admits that he didn't intend to hand her over to that foolish prince, but he doesn't know anything about marriage. She shares her sadness about her father telling her that she is either unsuitable for Toya or that Toya doesn't consider her suitable. Toya assures her that the other girls were wrong when they said they wouldn't mind being his wife. However, since she is still young, he won't marry her until she turns 18, just like the others. She agrees to that, thanks him profusely, and they embrace. Toya says he must make her happy as well. And thus, our episode ends. We hope you subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell to receive updates 